Greetings and welcome to this week's edition of 401k Real Talk. This is Fred Barstein, contributing editor at wealthmanagement.com's RPA Omnichannel and CEO at Trow, TPSU and 401k TV. I review all of last week's stories and select the most important and interesting ones, providing open, honest, and candid discussion you will not get anywhere else. So let's get real. First story, the job market exceeded expectations again in March with over 300,000 new jobs created, leaving one expert speechless. The 39th straight month of growth with unemployment remaining below 4%. Though some employers are cutting back and there are more people looking for a job, Paychex reported that clients are still struggling to find the right talent, which may be helped in part by 3.3 million net new immigrants expected this year, as well as the phased retirement trend. Experts wondered whether the report would make the Fed more likely to cut interest rates. Regardless, the report shows that the war for talent, which varies by industry sector, is still on, highlighting the increased role of benefits, especially retirement plans, play in recruiting and retaining employees. Next story, conflicts of interest in the financial services industry were highlighted in a recent Wall Street Journal article and punctuated by an almost $100 million fine by the SEC on Commonwealth. The journal noted that though fee-based advisors are still preferred over commission brokers, there is still opportunity for abuse, causing some to advise clients to take Social Security earlier and not pay down debt to boost assets in their fees, as well as not buy annuities when it may be appropriate. The SEC claimed Commonwealth used high share classes and investments on the Fidelity Clearing platform that paid higher revenue sharing to the firm, citing improper disclosure to clients and cheaper alternatives. Though conflicts may be impossible to eliminate completely, as I wrote in my recent wealthmanagement.com column, eliminating revenue share, whether direct to the plan or indirect to the platforms, is a good start. And remember that unlike the SEC, the DLL does not rely on disclosure. It prescribes behavior. Next story, there were a flurry of product announcements, including iJoin, LeafHouse, ARS, and State Street Global Advisors, Lifetime Income Target Date Fund, which includes personalized advice and income options. Bernardzi's Pension Plus and IRA Logic partner to offer affordable retirement plans while retaining the original investments. Human Interest launched three new services to offset $50,000 in DOL audit expenses, secure 2.0 tax credit support, and help to defray mail notices, work, and cost. And finally, New Retirement, a financial wellness provider with 300,000 users and 100 billion in assets, raised an additional $20 million Series A funding and is now targeting record keepers. Next story, the industry has a new critic who claims that the 401k era is ending. Labor economist, Bloomberg contributor, and TikTok star, Catherine Edwards, joined a list of story critics, including BlackRock's Larry Fink, advocating that the government should stop subsidizing 401k plans and should instead use the money for an omnibus federal plan, like the thrift savings plan, as well as funding, more funding for social security. Citing that just 31% of Americans believe they are on track to retire and the recent IBM move to freeze their 401k match, Edward thinks that the time has come to move on. Finally, 
The 401k industry is under attack, not just by Catherine Edwards, but also Boston College's Alicia Munal, the new schools to reach at Garaducci, and most recently, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. Predictably, the defined contribution industry gets defensive. And while there are obvious benefits which do need defending, perhaps we should be spending more time addressing some of the legitimate concerns raised by these well-respected professionals. Read my wealth management column about how we need to keep innovating like we have been doing recently through PEPs, student loans, um, emergency savings plans, retirement income solutions, personalized target dates, managed accounts, HSAs, financial wellness, and welcoming, not eschewing, wealth advisors. Make no mistake, now that the spotlight is shining brightly on the DC system, the industry will have to answer if results do not meet high expectations. So those are the most important stories from the past week. I listed a few others I thought were worth reading, covering wealthy clients, still prefer advisors and big firms, HSA assets hit new highs, record quarter and week for advisor M&A, Minnesota plan sponsor sues their advisor, and can chat GPT replace your ERISA counsel? Let me know if I missed anything or if you'd like to comment. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking to you next week on 401k Real Talk.